Passion Travel is a channel specializing in all things travel street food and subscribe if you like the content. Cafe Tuba. A strong, spiced coffee flavored with pepper and cloves. Cafe Tuba is a traditional and highly aromatic coffee beverage popular in West Africa, particularly in Senegal and neighboring regions. It's known for its unique and spicy flavor, which comes from the addition of spices, most notably pepper and cloves. Here's how Cafe Tuba is typically prepared and enjoyed. Ingredients. Coffee beans. High-quality coffee beans are used for making Cafe Tuba. These beans are often Arabica or Robusta varieties. African pepper. Known locally as, jar, African pepper, Aframoma melagueta, is a key ingredient that gives Cafe Tuba its distinctive spicy flavor. It's similar to black or red pepper and adds a warming kick to the coffee. Cloves. Cloves are another essential spice used in the preparation of Cafe Tuba. They contribute to the coffee's complex flavor profile. Sugar. Sugar is often added to sweeten the coffee, but the amount can vary according to individual taste. Preparation. Spice blend. To make Cafe Tuba, a special spice blend is created. This blend typically includes African pepper and cloves, although the exact composition can vary. The spices are ground together to form a coarse powder. Coffee brewing. Coffee beans are roasted and ground as usual. The ground coffee is then mixed with the spice blend. The ratio of coffee to spice is adjusted to suit personal taste preferences. Brewing. The coffee spice mixture is brewed using methods such as drip brewing, French press, or a traditional coffee pot called a casse. The spices are steeped along with the coffee grounds, infusing the brew with their flavor. Sweetening. Sugar is often added directly to the brewing coffee to sweeten it. The amount of sugar can vary widely, from a small spoonful to quite a bit, depending on personal preference. Serving. Café tuba is typically served in small cups or glasses. It's enjoyed hot and is often served with a small glass of water on the side. Enjoyment. Café tuba is a bold and flavorful coffee with a unique blend of spiciness from the pepper and cloves. It's known for its warming and invigorating properties, which are especially appreciated in Senegal's warm climate. In addition to its taste, Café Tuba has cultural significance in Senegal and is often consumed as part of social and religious gatherings. It's also considered a remedy for various ailments, and some people believe it has medicinal properties. Sao Tome on Roasted Cashews Freshly roasted cashews with a variety of seasonings. Sao Tome on Roasted Cashews are a delightful and popular snack in Sao Tome and Principe. Cashew nuts are a significant agricultural product in the country and they are often enjoyed in various forms, including as roasted and salted snacks. Here's how Sao Tome on roasted cashews are typically prepared. Ingredients. Cashew nuts. High-quality cashew nuts with their shells removed. Salt. Sea salt or another type of salt is commonly used to season the cashews. Preparation. Harvesting and shelling. Cashew nuts are harvested from cashew apple fruit. The shell of the cashew nut contains a toxic oil, so the nuts must be properly processed. In Sao Tome and Principe, this is often done manually, and the nuts are shelled to remove the outer toxic shell layer. Drying. Once shelled, the cashew nuts are typically spread out to dry in the sun. This drying process helps reduce the moisture content of the nuts, making them suitable for roasting. Roasting. After drying, the cashews are roasted. Roasting is done either in ovens or over an open flame. During this process, the cashews are continuously stirred to ensure even roasting. The heat causes the natural oils in the cashews to come to the surface, giving them a rich, roasted flavor. Seasoning. While the cashews are still warm from roasting, they are often seasoned with salt. The salt adheres well to the nuts due to the residual oils on the surface. Cooling and packaging. Once roasted and salted, the cashews are allowed to cool. After cooling, they are typically packaged in containers or bags for sale. Enjoyment. Sao Tome on roasted cashews make for a delicious and satisfying snack. Their natural richness and nutty flavor are enhanced by the roasting process, and the added salt provides a savory contrast. They are commonly enjoyed as a quick and tasty snack, either on their own or as part of a larger meal. In Sao Tome and Principe, as well as in other parts of the world, cashews are also used in various culinary applications, from nut butters to stews and desserts. However, the simplicity and deliciousness of roasted cashews make them a beloved and readily available street food and snack in the country. Grilled fish. 
freshly caught and grilled fish, often seasoned with local spices. Grilled fish is a popular and delicious dish enjoyed around the world, including in Sao Tome and Principe, where seafood is abundant. Grilling fish enhances its natural flavors and gives it a smoky, charred aroma. Here's a general guide on how to prepare and grill fish. Ingredients. Fish. Select fresh fish of your choice. Common choices include whole fish like tilapia, snapper, or mackerel, or fish fillets like tuna, mahi-mahi, or sea bass. Marinade or seasoning. Prepare a marinade or seasoning to enhance the flavor of the fish. Common ingredients include olive oil, garlic, lemon juice, herbs, such as parsley, thyme, or rosemary. Spices, like paprika or cayenne pepper, and salt and pepper. Preparation. Clean and prep. Ensure the fish is cleaned and properly prepared. For whole fish, make sure it is gutted and scaled. For fillets, remove any bones. Marinate. Place the fish in a bowl or zip-top bag and add the marinade or seasoning. Let it marinate in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes, or longer for more flavor penetration. Be careful not to over-marinate, as this can overpower the fish's flavor. Grilling. Preheat the grill. Preheat your grill to medium-high heat. If you're using charcoal, wait until the coals are covered with white ash and the heat is even. Oil the grates. To prevent sticking, use a paper towel or brush to oil the grill grates with vegetable oil. Direct versus indirect heat. Determine whether you'll use direct or indirect grilling based on the type of fish. Whole fish are typically grilled over indirect heat to ensure they cook evenly without burning on the outside. Fillets can be cooked directly over the heat source. Grill. Place the fish on the grill grates, skin side down if applicable, and close the lid. Cooking times vary depending on the thickness and type of fish. A general guideline is to cook fish for about 10 minutes per inch of thickness, flipping it halfway through. Whole fish may take longer. Check for doneness. Fish is done when it turns opaque and flakes easily with a fork. Overcooking can make it dry and tough. Serve. Once cooked, remove the fish from the grill and let it rest for a minute or two. Serve it hot with your choice of sides, such as a fresh salad, grilled vegetables, or a flavorful sauce. Serving and enjoyment. Grilled fish is a delightful and healthy option that can be enjoyed in various ways. Serve with a squeeze of fresh lemon or lime juice for a zesty finish. Bolo de coco. A Portuguese-style flatbread, often served with garlic butter. Bolo de coco is a traditional Portuguese bread particularly associated with the Madeira region, an autonomous territory of Portugal located in the Atlantic Ocean. Bolo de coco is a unique and delicious type of bread, often served as a snack or accompaniment to meals. It is characterized by its round, flat shape and slightly sweet, soft, and fluffy texture. Here's how to make it. Ingredients. For the dough. 500 grams of wheat flour. This is the primary ingredient for the bread. One packet of dry yeast typically about 7 grams. 1 teaspoon of salt, to enhance the flavor. 1 teaspoon of sugar, to aid in the yeast's activation. 1 cup of warm water. Use warm water to activate the yeast. For flavor and texture, 1 quarter cup of olive oil, adds moisture and flavor to the bread. Sweet potatoes. 1 or 2 sweet potatoes, depending on size, boiled and mashed. These give bolo de coco its distinctive sweet and soft texture. Instructions. Activate the yeast. In a small bowl, combine the yeast, warm water, and sugar. Let it sit for about 5 to 10 minutes until it becomes frothy. This indicates that the yeast is activated. Mix the dry ingredients. In a larger mixing bowl, combine the flour and salt. Add the mashed sweet potatoes. Mix the mashed sweet potatoes and olive oil into the dry ingredients. Incorporate the yeast mixture. Pour the activated yeast mixture into the bowl with the other ingredients. Mix everything together to form a dough. Knead the dough. Turn the dough onto a floured surface and knead it for about 10 to 15 minutes until it becomes smooth and elastic. Let it rise. Place the dough back in the bowl, cover it with a cloth or plastic wrap, and let it rise for about 1 to 2 hours, or until it has doubled in size. Divide and shape. Once the dough has risen, Divide it into smaller portions and shape them into round, flat bread rolls. Second rise. Let the shaped rolls rest and rise for another 30 to 60 minutes. Cooking. Bolo de coco is traditionally cooked on a hot stone or griddle. If you don't have access to a hot stone, a hot cast iron skillet or griddle will work. 
Cook the rolls for about 5 to 7 minutes on each side, or until they are golden brown and cooked through. Camarao Tigra. Grilled Tiger Prawns, a seafood delicacy. Camarao Tigra refers to tiger prawns, which are large and often considered a delicacy in many cuisines around the world, including Portuguese and Brazilian. These prawns are known for their impressive size, robust flavor, and firm texture. They are a popular seafood choice for various dishes, and they are often prepared and enjoyed in several ways. Ingredients Tiger prawns Select large, whole tiger prawns. The size can vary, but they are typically large and impressive, often served with their heads and shells intact for added flavor. Olive oil. Used for sautéing and cooking the prawns. Garlic. Fresh garlic cloves or minced garlic add a wonderful aromatic flavor. Lemon juice. Provides a citrusy brightness and complements the prawn's natural taste. Fresh herbs. Herbs like parsley, cilantro, or chives can be used for garnish and additional flavor. Salt and pepper. For seasoning to taste. Preparation. Cleaning the prawns. Tiger prawns often come with their heads and shells intact, which can be removed or kept depending on your preference. Some people enjoy the extra flavor and presentation of leaving the heads and shells on. If you choose to remove them, use kitchen shears or a sharp knife to carefully cut along the back of each prawn and remove the dark vein, the digestive tract. Seasoning. Season the prawns with salt and pepper. You can add other seasonings as desired such as paprika or cayenne pepper for a spicy kick. Sautéing. Heat olive oil in a large skillet or pan over medium-high heat. Add minced garlic and sauté for a minute or until it becomes fragrant. Cooking the prawns. Add the seasoned prawns to the pan. Cook them for a few minutes on each side until they turn pink and opaque. Be careful not to overcook them, as tiger prawns can become tough if cooked for too long. Lemon juice. Squeeze fresh lemon juice over the prawns in the pan just before removing them. This adds a fresh, zesty flavor. Garnish. Sprinkle with fresh herbs, such as chopped parsley or cilantro, to enhance the dish's visual appeal and flavor.